as well pray for the, yeah, the tithes and offerings. And also for the word, Father, we just thank you that we can come into your presence, Lord God, that we're here together. Lord, because your grace is upon us. Lord, your hand is upon us. Lord, we just thank you, Father, for the, Lord, the, the capacity, Lord God, to give back to you, Lord, the portion, Lord God, that you desire for us to give. Lord, that our tithes would be used for the extension of your kingdom upon this earth. That your blessing would be upon those that give. And, uh, and Lord, your blessing would be upon each one. Lord, also, Lord, we come around your word today. We pray, Lord, that you would help, your Holy Spirit would guide and direct this time. That it would be fruitful to us. That, Lord, that we would uh, be uh, blessed and encouraged and strengthened by your word. And, Lord, that we can be a little bit more like Jesus each day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Bless you. Thank you very much. Well, it's so good to be here. Uh, the last couple of weeks I've been sharing on the Beatitudes uh, during the filming, the YouTube and Facebook. And uh, it's been a great challenge to me. I don't know about you, if you've been watching it, it's been, uh, it's been a great challenge to me as I've had to research uh, what it really means. And I have to uh, put my hand up and say that uh, a couple of these areas I was not quite as understanding as I should be about what that means. Yeah, of course, the Beatitudes are not uh, there for us to, uh, uh, to gain our salvation, but they are there as a, a guideline or as an uh, instruction by Jesus of how we ought to live. Okay, how do we live? And uh, this is, I'm going to talk today about salt and light, which is the next few verses out of uh, uh, the Gospel of uh, Matthew in chapter 5. And, um, and th these passages of Scripture are not disconnected, they're not isolated, they're not one message and then another message, they're actually uh, related, they're connected. And so therefore, based upon the Beatitudes, then Jesus tells us that we ought to be salt and light. Okay, and what's it mean to be salt and light? Um, in, uh, I just want to read this passage of scripture out of uh, Matthew chapter 5 and verses 13 to 16. Uh, this is Jesus speaking, he says, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Then in verse 14 he says, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put light or light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Uh, as I've been reflecting upon uh, this teaching, and often we, 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 when we study the word, we look at it and find out how it was written, why it was written in context. And as I've been meditating on this, I, I realise that this is more appropriate to us today than it was even to them then. And so much of the Bible, of course, was written uh, so that we can glean from it, that God would speak to us through his word. Okay? So, uh, so these scriptures are made for us now. Okay? He's speaking to us now. This is Jesus speaking. He says, you are the salt of the earth. It's interesting that in, the, in, in Matthew, the Lord is predominantly speaking to the church, talking to believers. Okay? He's, he's not talking to unbelievers, he's talking to believers. And then he says, You are the salt of the earth. So he's saying to, if you're a believer, you are the salt of the earth. It's not, you can become the salt of the earth. Or when you are good enough, you're the salt of the earth. He says, you are the salt of the earth now. Do you realize, do you realize that you are the salt of the earth? And what does that mean? Uh, salt. 
To get a good grasp on this, we've got to understand that during the time of Jesus, salt was very, very important. Okay, salt to us today, that we go to the, uh, the, to the um, shop and buy a little bit of salt and we sprinkle it upon our food. Is that right? That's predominantly the way it's used today. But in reality, in those days, salt was, it was a very uh, valuable commodity. Okay, salt uh, in, in, the, in the Roman day, because this is the Roman day, that uh, even you know that saying that uh, you, you, you're not worth your salt or you're worth your salt, it means that uh, in fact some people got paid with salt. That's, that's how valuable it was. Okay, salt was used to, uh, uh, to keep meat. It was also used for agriculture, for purifying, for, for, for many different things. And so therefore we need to have an understanding what it means to be salt. And uh, that we have been uh, called by God to be a blessing to others. Okay, to be salt is, is, is not to be salt for yourself, it's to be salt for others. Okay? And um, I just want to have a bit of a look and see what... So it's, it was used as a preservative, it was used as a, a seasoning, as you were doing. It was used for purif purifying things, for even as a fertilizer. So salt was a big deal. And uh, God needs salt in our community. Okay? In our community, we are salt. And God needs us. Uh, he, uh, uh, he, he, he tells us through this that we are very valuable. You, know, you, you are very valuable to God. Okay? You are important to God. Because you are the salt. It's interesting when he talks about light, he says, you are the light of the world. And we know in Romans chapter 8, he says, I am the light of the world. And uh, so I'll go into that a little bit later. But first I want to look a little bit about salt. The fact is that God has placed his people, which are believers, strategically through, through our community to be salt. To make an influence on other people. Okay, so that, so that when it's talking about being salt and light, he's not talking about so much about what, to, what you should be saying as about what you should be doing and who you are. Okay? It's interesting that uh, I heard an illustration about uh, this uh, minister in England who uh, had a visit from the um, chief. What was it? What was this? This lady it was a superintendent of a hospital, and she came to visit him and said, "I really appreciate your church." And he said, "Hi, oh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, how come?" Because he thought about it. He thought, "We have no association with this hospital apart from the church." And then he, he found out that there were a, a percentage of the people out of the church that actually worked in the hospital. He said that there was, there was about. 7% um, of his people actually worked in the hospital. And this superintendent said that ever since, over the last few years, that, uh, that the people from the fellowship influenced the flow of the, of the hospital. She said, I have had less problems with, during this time since the last years, since your people have been working in my hospital. Okay, so it, it, it is the fact that their presence was there, was having an influence on the whole working of, of, of the hospital. Salt, Jesus said, is, is <laughs> that we are salt and that if it loses its saltiness, it's of no value and it's trampled underfoot. But, but he's saying that, that, that you are salt and wherever you go, you, uh, you will bring an influence where you are. Do you make, I want to ask you a question, are you making a difference in the, within the work that you live in and the place where you work or the place you live or the people you associate with? Are you making a difference? See, salt should make a difference. You know, salt, when we use it as a seasoning, uh, then it, it makes the food taste better. Is that right? So, so, so because God has placed you 
where he has placed you, wherever you are, should be better because you're there. Amen. Okay, so it makes a difference. So uh, uh, if you have the right percentage of, uh, of Christian people within an organisation, it'll make a difference. If you're on your own in a large organisation, it'll make very little, but, but, but the, the general thought was, as this experiment was made, is that if, if there's at least between 5 and 10% of the, of, of the people that are working there are Christians or in an organisation, it will make a difference in the flow of what's happening. The other thing is, uh, salt has to have direct uh, contact with whatever you put, put it in. You see, salt is not worth much when it's in a box. It, it doesn't do much. Salt in the salt container does nothing. It has to come out of the, out of the container and before it's of any value. In the early days, before we had refrigeration, they used to use salt to keep meat fresh and to keep fish fresh. Or, okay, and, but it had to have direct contact on it for it to be any good. Okay, so if you were paid by salt and you got a bag of salt, and it wasn't just coming in a small little thing, it came in, in quantity. And so therefore, as, as it was used, it was valuable. So if, if you, your life is salt, and uh, if you keep it in a box, and therefore you keep yourself to yourself, and you don't do anything, it's of no value. But if you allow your values, the way you live, and the way you speak, to be out and to mix with different ones, it will make a difference. Understand? So it makes a difference. It's, you, you don't keep it to yourself, you allow it to touch lives. So we are meant to be touching lives, okay? By, by who you are. Okay? Not because you're ne necessarily standing there preaching the gospel to everybody, but the fact that you're there, your presence, and if you live your lifestyle as a Christian, you will make a difference. It says, in, uh, Jesus said also, he said, if it loses its saltiness, it's of no good. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve God's will, what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Are you t do you function as the world functions? Uh, is your life any different to anyone else? Our life ought to be different. Okay, Jesus, well, in, in, Paul says in Romans, says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, God's intention for us is that we don't remain the same. Okay, that, that we are different. That, 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 that we do things and think about things from God's perspective. And the only way we can do that is that our mind is renewed. When we become Christians, automatically uh, there's a transformation starts to happen because it's the, it's the Holy Spirit starts to transform our lives. Okay? Salt. We are salt. Yes. So, so whether you like it or you don't like it, you're salt. You're either salty or you're not salty. Okay? You're either, you're either influencing or you're not influencing. Okay? But Jesus didn't say, I want to see how many people want to volunteer to be salt. He's saying, you are salt. Okay? In the next part, he says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. He talks about a hill, it's a, a town on a hill with... Uh, uh, it's lights on of an evening, or in those days they had a lot of small lamps, but it can't be hidden because of a night time everyone's got their lamp on. And therefore, you know, light, I don't have to explain to you about light, the difference light makes. If you, if, if you go of a night time and go through any city, any place, you see it's all lit up. 
You ever uh, been in an aeroplane and you look down over night time and you see a city and it's just lights. It's going to be seen. Jesus said that you are the light of the world and then in, in, in John chapter 8 he says, I am the light of the world. It's just because like how it works is that we need to be a reflection of Jesus. It's interesting, the sun and the moon. You know that the, the moon has no light of itself. But the moon's light is a reflection of the sun. And so we are like the light of the world, like the moon. And Jesus is the light of the world, like the sun. But, and we are a reflection from Jesus. The light. Light reveals truth. It exposes darkness. Are you revealing truth? Are we exposing darkness? You know that uh, when certain people are in a certain place, other people change their attitude, change the way they, they, they do. I remember I was working for a um, swimming pool company and uh, uh, I found, because I'm a Christian, and so I found that when sometimes when I, I came into a place, I said, well, they used to refrain from swearing or saying certain things because I came there. Not because I was trying to be holy on the day, it's just that, uh, and it's the same sometimes you, you go in somewhere, and particularly before, uh, if a lady walks in the room or something, everyone starts to talk right. Ever had that? Yes. Okay. It is because the presence of light comes into an area and it exposes darkness and it has an influence in that area thing. It's fact. It's reality. Okay? So light exposes darkness and it reveals truth. It's important to... Uh, when we're talking with different things and people are talking about things which are totally wrong, that we need to, not, not that we start, but we give our opinion, our view on thing, how things ought to be. Okay? And people will, when you get credibility, they ask you for advice. Well, how do you see this? How do you see that? Okay? That is exposing light. God wants to expose the light through you. Again, Jesus didn't say, okay, uh, I want some volunteers to be light for me from here on. He didn't say, uh, he, doesn't also, he doesn't say that uh, when you're good enough, when you are transformed sufficiently, then you will be light. No, no, he says you are the light of the world, the light of the earth. Okay? You are the light of the earth. And it says that uh, we ought to shine before people. You know, uh, uh, <coughs> I was thinking about light. You know, the, our, the light we have today is vastly different than they had in those days. They used to have uh, a little uh, bowl of uh, oil with a wick in it, and they used to light it, and it used to light, and then they used to put a thing over it to sort of expose some light. Okay, so so the light was to reveal, was to break the darkness. It was to make it light. Okay. And, uh, uh, and that's what we're meant to be. We're meant to be a light that, that, that will make the room light. Not, we're not a flashlight or a torch where we can get it and we shine it in people's face. Okay? So, so, so we are just light. Not a threatening thing, but light. Bring things out in the open. In, uh, <coughs> that scratch of scripture in John 8 verse 12 it says when Jesus spoke again to the people he said I am the light of the world whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but will have light will have the light of life
It says here that uh, in verse 15, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. But instead they put on the lampstand. So the purpose of light is to bring light, not to dim it, not to uh, cover it over. Do you um, live your life with uh, a cover over your life? Do, you, uh, do people know that you're a Christian? Or uh, do you bring it out of the open? You know, as Christians, we ought to be the best workers. We ought to be the politest people. We ought to be uh, the most encouraging person. You know, this, the, the, the Jesus is speaking here and saying, this is what you are, and we, and even, as I said before, it's related to the Beatitudes, and this is how we ought to live our lives. It's, it's, not, it's not that we, if you don't live this way, you're not saved. You're still saved. It, it, this is not a way to salvation. It is a, a response from salvation. Yes. Amen. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Everyone in the house. So that we are a light and salt first in our house. That's the first place. Okay? It gives light in the house. Are you light and salt in your house? Yes. <laughs> That's the place where we begin. Okay? It's the first place that we begin. Is that we need to be salt and light. Uh, we ought to be people who are blessing and encouragement first to those in our own household. Because if we can't be a light and a uh, and salt and, and influence in our own household, how can we be in someone else's uh, place? Okay, so the challenge for us is, is do we live our life uh, the same wherever we are? Or are we one person when we're at home and a different person when we're in the church? Or a different person when, when I'm going to work? Or a different person when I'm or are we the same person wherever we go? It's interesting, isn't it? He says, first, it lights up the whole house. Our light needs to shine in our own house. Are we a blessing to our husbands, to our wives? Husbands loving wives. Caring for the children. Exposing our Christian values. Let your light shine in our home, in our, for our children. To the example, are we, a, are we a proper Christian witness in our own household? Are we, the, are we an example for our children to uh, imitate? And do we have peace in our home? Blessed are the peacemakers. Okay? Mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Do you show mercy? Are you merciful? In our uh, newsletter this week uh, <coughs> are the, uh, some notes on my previous messages on, on the Beatitudes. And so therefore, uh, uh, how we ought to be living. Are we, uh, are we a standover merchant in our house? Or are we poor in spirit? Do we uh, uh, are serious about sin? Blessed are those that mourn, for they will be comforted. Mercy. Do you show mercy? 
See, we have to first do it in our house. In our home. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Are we doing good works? You know, it's uh, sometimes <laughs> when God speaks to us, uh, and uh, I just meditating on a guy who says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. It's, it's, it's uh, God prompted me and he said, For I so loved, so loved the world. That means he didn't just love the world, he so loved. It's like uh, really bring it out there. So loved. And, uh, and so he's saying, I so love everyone. I so love that person that uh, I have a hard time connecting with. But I so loved him. So I so loved him. So loved. God so loved you. Blessed are the merciful. Am I showing mercy? And, 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 see, mercy is uh, not receiving what we deserve. So we deserve judgment. We deserve to pay the penalty for our own sin. That God so loved the world that he took it upon himself. So he would not put us under judgment. Do you give people what they don't deserve? Do you treat people the way God wants you to be treated, with the way you want to be treated by God? For God so loved. We are an expression of God's love. You know, people in the world need to see Jesus. And the only way they're going to see Jesus is through his people. Through you and I are the only way that some people are ever going to see Jesus. Because he, we are a reflection of Jesus Christ. Okay? We reflect his love, his goodness. Whatever good you do, God gets credit for it. The Father is glorified. If we do the good works that God prepared for us, then He will get glory. It's not so much that we would get glory, it's that He would get glory. Okay? Uh, so somebody would say that uh, because we're doing certain things, that person would say, that's because he's a Christian. And, okay, he's doing it because... Okay? Because his father, to glorify God the Father. Sometimes you have it in a household where uh, uh, people reflect and they say that, uh, uh, look at their children. They're behaving themselves. They, they're courteous. It's because they've been trained and they give glory to their father and mother. Notice that? It's, it's okay? It's because it's the same with us. That if we uh, do good works and do the right thing and we live our life the way the Lord wants us to live us, the Father gets glory from that. God the Father. That's because that person's a Christian. That person's, okay? And that's why they behave that way. Okay? They give God the glory. Amen. Just some thoughts. Salt is needed because the world is rotting. Because the standards and the values around the world are deteriorating. It needs salt. It needs a presence 
of Christians in places so therefore the right thing can be brought out. Okay? Light is needed because the, the, the world is in darkness. There needs to be a distinguishing a difference between a, a Christian and a non-Christian. Not that Christians are better than anyone else. It's just that our Christian values need to be presented. Okay? They need not to be hidden. They need not to be uh, uh, left in a box. Okay, I'll read it for us. Jesus didn't say, when you are good enough, then you will be salt or light. He says, you are the salt of the world. You are the light of the world. It, it, it's by allowing our life to be presented. It's not, that, that is not the way that we gain salvation. Salvation only comes through Jesus Christ, only comes through the fact that he died on the cross for our sin and that we by faith receive it. Okay? But God does want us to, uh, to live a life that's pleasing to him. Jesus is not telling us how to become a disciple, but uh, how to live our lives out as a disciple. Thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the message. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for the opportunity we have, Lord, to come around your word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the words that Jesus speaks to us. And Lord, that we can apply to our life. Lord, if, uh, if you this morning are speaking to us, are you showing us and saying, listen, I want you to be uh, salt and light in your own house. Uh, I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would just challenge us, equip us, and Lord, uh, show us the way we ought to live. Father, in our workplace, Lord, that we would be salt and light where we work. Lord, that we would recognise, Lord God, that we have been planted there by you to be the influence, to be salt, to be that person that would reflect your goodness, Lord, to those around about us. Father, I thank you. Thank you, Lord, for each one that's here. Thank you for the opportunity, Lord, that where you have placed each one. Lord, that they would be a powerful influence, Lord, because you place them in those positions. Lord, because they are your representatives, Lord God, in those workplaces, in the society where we live, in the neighbourhood where we live. Lord God, I pray that each of us would reflect Jesus. Lord, that we would have a confidence and a count of an honour and a privilege, Lord God, to be found, Lord, in your house, to be found, Lord God, in your kingdom and be a blessing to those around us. So, Father, I pray for everyone here today that you would guide and direct our life, Lord, that we would see uh, what Jesus is saying to us and, Lord, that we would be what you ask us to be, that we would be light and we would be salt, Lord, in our situation. Father, I thank you for that right now. Right now. And Lord, I pray also, Lord God, that each one of us, Lord God, that would understand the reality of Jesus Christ as Lord. So Father, I pray a blessing upon each one in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you very much. Bless you all. It's great to get together again. Make sure you uh, spend a little bit of time today and just share a bit of time with someone else. Okay? Bless you. If anybody wants prayer, you still have a prayer line, you can come out the front to have prayer. Okay? Thank you. Bless you.